This screencast shows how to use phylogenetically informed annotation, or PIA, to find vision genes. Currently, we can use PIA to rapidly search datasets for homologs of 109 separate genes from the Light Interaction Toolkit, or LIT, which is a collection of genes involved in the function or development of light interacting structures like eyes in metazoans. To get started using PIA, you'll first need to go to the public website, which is at galaxy-dev.cnsi.ucsb.edu slash PIA. If you're visiting the website for the first time, you'll have to register as a user. In order to do that, go to the top here, click on User, and on the menu, click Register. You'll be asked to enter your email and a password, as well as a public name that you will use to be identified on the site. I already have registered, and so I will log in by clicking up here on User, and then log in and entering my data, and now I'm logged in. A first step is to create a new history. And in order to do that, click on this gear icon, and then click on Create New. A history is a record of all the different analyses that you do. We can name the history by clicking on it here, and I will click, uh, I will call this Demo. It is helpful to start new histories for each of the different data sets that you plan to explore using PIA. Next, we need to upload a data set. To upload data set for analyses, you go to the Tools menu over at the left and click on Upload Data. And then under Upload Data, you can click on Upload File. Here, we'll have the option of using a URL, which we can paste in this box here, or choosing a file from our local computer. Uh, what I will do today is use a URL, and I have on my other browser tab here a link to the Data Dryad repository. And this data set on the Dryad repository is a transcriptome from the, the Ostracod crustacean Euphilomedes carcharodonta. So down at the bottom is a link to the data set in FASTA format. So I'll right click here where it says View Open and I will click on Copy Link. Then I'll go back to the PIA website and paste that link into the box asking for the URL. I will click on Execute and that will start the download of the data from the website. So when a tool here in your history is gray, it means it's waiting to run, then it turns yellow while it's running, and now green uh, signifying that the tool is done running. So now we have downloaded the data from the Data Dryad repository. We can click on the eye in order to see the data itself. You can see it's a set of FASTA files uh, with DNA sequences. We can also click on this pencil or edit attributes icon in order to change the name of this file. So I'll click here and what I will call this is Euphilomedes transcriptome. And then I'll click on Save, and you can see that in our history, the name is now changed to Euphilomedes Transcriptome. So, PIA actually uses amino acid sequences of proteins. So we could either upload these directly into the database, into the website if we have them, or we can generate open reading frames using tools on the PIA website. So again, over under Tools here, we want to now click on Analyze Data, and then we can click on Get Open Reading Frames. So the first thing we need to choose is our data set, and I want to translate this Euphilomedes transcriptome. Next, we choose the genetic code. That will be standard. We can uh, choose some different options, and here I will only check for stop uh, codons and ignore start codons. This will be open-ended and uh, doesn't require start and stop codons. And then also, I will keep only the biggest uh, open reading frames from each sequence and they must be at least 30 amino acids long. I'll search both forward and reverse strands because we don't know which direction they are in in this transcriptome. Then I'll click execute. So this tool will take a few minutes to complete. 
Now that we've predicted open reading frames and we have amino acid sequences, which we can see by clicking on the view data icon here, we can proceed to using the PIA tool itself. And in order to do that, we click over here on Tools at the left under Analyze Data and click on the tool called PIA or Perform Phylogenetically Informed Annotation. Here we have a few different options. The first we need to specify what our input data is. And again, we want to use amino acids. And that is our file in our history, number four, which are the open reading frames uh, from our transcriptome data. Next we have a choice if we want to annotate a group of genes that are functionally related here, which will bring up a list including retinal determination network genes, photoreceptor specification genes, etc. We can also choose to annotate a single gene at a time. And what this will do is it will search for a particular gene within our data set and then place that onto pre-compiled phylogenetic trees for one of 109 different genes. So right now I'm going to look for optics genes. This is a transcription factor involved in eye development. We also have the ability to change the E value for our BLAST searches. So what we will first do in this case is what PIA will do is in this case first search for optic genes within our data set and this sets the um, specificity of those searches um, using uh, this data set. We can also choose the maximum number of hits that we include. So basically by having a higher E value and a higher maximum number of hits we will include more genes based on similarity alone that will be placed onto our phylogenetic tree of interest. We also have the choice of different alignment programs, and the default is MAFT profile. So a profile alignment doesn't realign all of the genes, it just takes the new hits and aligns them to an existing alignment so it's much faster. But these other two, uh, either MAFT or MUSCLE, will realign all of the genes before calculating the phylogenetic tree or before placing the hits on the phylogenetic tree. Next we hit execute in order to start these, this tool running. And again, it turns gray as it prepares, then we'll turn yellow as the tool is running. And once it turns green, that means the tool is finished running. And you can see that there are four different history items that we can look at for the PIA output. Uh, most importantly, probably, are the PIA results that are all, hit, all genes hit. So all of these are the results of our BLAST search. So anything similar enough to be hit by our BLAST parameters are written here. And then the other important file is the last one, which includes a phylogenetic tree. This was a pre-compiled phylogenetic tree of optics with our new hits placed within that tree. Now what we want to do is to be able to view this phylogenetic tree. And to do that, we could either copy this out, uh, the parentheses format, and paste it into a external program of our choice or within this website we can use the tab to trees file uh, tra tab to trees tool so this has different options first we need to tell it which data set to input and this is the correct data set here number 32 which is the P our PIA result we can choose which style of tree we want and a phylogram is good here we can decide whether or not we want to highlight genes that have the name query or the name landmark using labels and this is important for PIA because queries are genes that are hit by our BLAST parameters and placed within the phylogenetic tree and landmark are genes that are functionally well understood and occur within our gene trees. Uh, in addition we can choose whether or not we want to midpoint root all the trees and these already are midpoint rooted for all our trees so this doesn't matter too much. Next we click on execute and then that tool will run and tab to trees produces a PDF file for the phylogenetic trees in the history. So if we were to have chosen more than one gene, for example, if we did a functional category of genes like all phototransduction genes, then tab to trees can produce a book with one page per tree with all the different trees that we want to see in there. So we can click on the I and view the PDF we can uh, download this PDF or we can zoom it here. I've already on another 
screen, I have downloaded that PDF and zoomed in into the most important part of the phylogeny. You can see here in red, a landmark is labeled. This is the Drosophila optics gene. And we can see two different queries, so two different hits from our transcriptome are closely related to this landmark. So these would be very good candidates to explore further. Down here we can also see a query that another hit, this is on a very long branch, and it's also closely relate, most closely related to a TINA4 gene, and so this would be less of a priority for a candidate for an, an optics gene. So I hope that allows you to get started using phylogenetically informed annotation. And please also look out for another screencast which can show you how to use workflows. And workflows allow you to easily run multiple tools uh, with the click of a button.